Hey kitties, what's up? I hope you like the audio and video better. I'm uh, filming this on the Nikon D750 with 2470 VRG. Yeah, 2485 VRG, excuse me, and a uh, Sennheiser uh, shotgun microphone, the ME64, by the way. Although, uh, who needs better audio and video of my ugly face? I have no idea, but uh, let's just work off the assumption that uh, better is better than worse. <laughs> a lot of people asked me uh, about um, lenses and uh, what actually is so bad about my lenses. I'm completely forgetting about the plastic construction of uh, some of the G series lenses um, that you know have a plastic body and of course there's no aperture ring you know what's the big deal I mean why are those older lenses better now Nikon still makes some really nice old-fashioned uh, AIS lenses not many um, the old-fashioned way with aperture rings and all metal bodies and uh, you know there are no internal motors no internal chips and uh, you know, you have to do uh, non-CPU data entering to tell the camera what's on the front of the lens. But what is it about glass, you know, that is so evil that it ruins the renditional distortion, causes uh, renditional distortion on images? Like, uh, even though uh, I was using a couple weeks ago, because I needed the autofocus speed, the uh, the uh, Tamron 70 to 200 uh, f 2.8 VC with vibration control lens. Yeah, the lens has 23 elements in it, and the images are flat, okay? And they do have a blue spectrum absorption. It has to do with uh, phase, collimation, and coherency. I mean, the same thing that defines uh, lasers uh, versus incoherent light, which, by the way, there are tons of descriptions of mathematical formulas for the quanta, quantity of interactions and in, uh, EV electrovolts of, uh, of light the actual structure of light still, and this blows people's minds, especially when you mention magnetism. The magnets are in everything we use today. There isn't a book that was ever written on magnetism that I haven't been through or don't own. I literally wrote the book on magnetism, on the fourth book on magnetism right now. Nobody on earth knows how a magnet works. And also, nobody on Earth really knows what light is. Now, I do know how a magnet works. I mean, it's a reciprocating processional hyperbola, which extrapolates itself out in hypertrochoidal formation. And you say that, it makes people's eyes cross, and they're like, what the hell are you talking about? But it is really very divinely simple. Now, what does this have to do with optics? Okay. Now, there are a lot of empirical criteria that lens designers make when designing optics. Obviously, I remember chromatic aberration, and want to be super sharp. They wanted to have great corner to corner sharpness, especially uh, for uh, full frame sensors, because every lens, no matter if it's DX or FX, projects out a circle of light. Okay, and you either got a DX sensor or an FX sensor, um, but you know the lens is just shooting out a circle of light at its rear end. So now, what are they actually doing? They're using ED doped elements, which have uh, certain levels of uh, dielectric uh, permittivity. And they also have levels of uh, magnetic permeability. Uh, what's the issue with this? Well, light is of the nature that, depending on whether it's red end of the spectrum or blue end of the spectrum, it doesn't like to be wrangled. It has different focal points. When you pass them through lenses, okay, they do not converge at the same point. This is the premise of uh, chromatic aberration. You got you got blue light uh, focusing here, and you have red light focusing here. And all these lenses are designed with a certain number of ED elements. And Canon's come out with a new uh, organic compound, which tries to get the focus point of the red end and the blue end of the spectrum in the same place. Light does not like to be wrangled. Now, I don't know if you know how a hologram is made or not, but when it comes to light coherency, different parts of the laser beam... Uh, relation to each other or in phase. This phase relationship is maintained over a long enough time so the interference effects of the object that's reflected off of uh, versus the reference beam or the reflected beam, the effects seen and recorded photographically reduce the hologram. This coherent property is what makes a hologram possible and actually renders that depth out. Now, the same thing is in a picture. You print a picture out, it's 2D. It's like, what well, are you talking about depth, you know? Well, you can see in the picture the depth. It's not a hologram, it's a picture that you took. But if you actually unfocus your eyes, you can see the foreground and the background are like that, like on a 23 element lens. 
but like a six element Austin Prime, like a 35 millimeter F2, or a 135 millimeter uh, F2. Point. Now, all you people report this, oh my god, this lens is so magical. What's so special about it, you know? It's an old ass lens. It shouldn't be as good as my, my new lens, but it's so much better. You know, I thought glass was supposed to have improved. Glass has improved in certain ways. And they've tried to eliminate out chromatic aberration, which is a good thing. But what they've done in the process is everything in life is give or take. And if you don't know this, then you were born yesterday. And what they've done is they've completely taken out depth and entered in, uh, introduced uh, renditional distortion. And they've uh, introduced corner-to-corner um, -corner sharpness, removed chromatic aberration, and created sharp lenses. The problem is that this uh, has problems uh, with uh, color saturation and it has problems with depth rendition. The depth rendition you won't read about in any photography magazine at all. How does the lens render the image? I'm not talking about how sharp it is. I'm not talking about corner to corner sharpness. I'm not talking about bokeh. I'm talking about color saturation and depth rendition. Okay, phase, coherency, and collimation. The binocular disparity. You know, here's something that you might find interesting, okay? Now, I've been screwing around with lasers for a very long time. Long time. There's not a single person on Earth that will give you a description and they'll give you mathematical formulas of the power in EV volts or in planks of a laser or coherent light on a surface given a certain distance, but they will never be able to describe to you. See, descriptions are for children. Explanations are for those with wisdom. Nobody can actually give you a description of why coherent, columnated, in-phase light is so much more powerful than equal power from incoherent light. Now, if you're actually able to take an incoherent beam of light and focus it very tightly, okay, you're actually to take like a 5-watt bulb, which is a unidirectional, in which you can actually make them that way. You're shooting all light out like this, and even then you're able to further still focus it okay focus it into a point like a magnifying glass okay still not as powerful as the 5 watt laser so you're able to take 5 watts of illumination and uh, uh, 5 watts of illumination to focus it it still will not have the same power as a coherent columnated uh, in phase light from a laser and there's not a single person in this world that will tell you well there's the quantum effect of uh, light coherency, you know, th this is this a description. See that description? They can actually give you empirical, uh, uh, denotative uh, uh, um, formulas for the power output given a certain distance and a certain output in watts and EV volts and planks, but they can never tell you why coherent light acts this way. So. Um, optics and light is still an unknown entity to science. Now, we're able to manipulate it a million different ways. But this is no different than a stupid caveman finding alien technology or something and, you know, being able to manipulate it into a thousand different toys. Okay, when human beings discovered what they could make and build with magnetism and lasers, you know, all our Blu-ray burners and DVD players, you know, that is exploitation of a discovery. That doesn't mean you understand how it works. Um, it's not my opinion, it's hardcore fact that there is not one single place on this earth where you can actually find a description of how a magnet works except for my book. Nowhere. What actually is the denotation of magnetism? The same is true of light. Now, what does this have to do with lenses? I mean, this is a photography channel. However, I was doing field theory videos long before I was doing photography stuff. You know, these, the light from these uh, multiple element lenses is monocular. It's not binocular, it is monocular. These lenses are designed as phase, phase discrimination wranglers. They're always trying to columnate and focus either end of the red, red end of the spectrum, blue end of the spectrum in the same spot. And what that ha does is the same thing that were to remove out uh, the depth disparity of the coherency between the phase reference beam and the reflected beam in the creation of a hologram. A hologram, just like a piece of printed image of a whatever, you shoot a dog out in a field. A hologram is no different. It's a flat friggin' sheet. But you can see depth there, okay? 
Ultimately, the same issue that's going on with a hologram as far as binocular disparity is the same issue that's going on with these damn lenses, especially the newer ones where they've got so many pieces of glass in them that they've completely butchered and hacked the piss out of the light before it reaches the sensor. So that all binocular disparity and all phase has been brought out and what you have is a monocular projection of the entered light so that everything is nice and focused, corner to corner, there's no chromatic aberrations. Like, well, my image is a sharp out of this lens with 23 elements, and it's got great corner to corner sharpness, and you know, the color is a little blah, but it's really sharp. They can take chromatic aberration out in Adobe Photoshop, take it out in post. Okay, what you cannot add in post, you can't add it, is depth rendition. And that renditional distortion is a phase discriminator that is applied by use of ED glass, long tubes, and too many glass elements. There are actually several other factors in there, but I bore the piss out of you in talking about it. And nobody talks about this in photography. But all you people that bought some of those uh, lenses that I recommend, well, that lens is 30 years old. I bought that lens because I found it cheap on your high recommendation because it seems like you might know something. And oh my God, the image is just so incredible. Yeah, thank you. Well, why? Why? It's a 30-year-old lens. Uh, that's right. So why is this lens better than my $1,000, you know, 28 to 400? <laughs> you know, my, my current uh, 28 to 300 or my my 5 millimeter to 5,000 millimeter uh, super, super, ultra, ultra, you know, <laughs> what is it? Like, you already answered your own question and you don't even know. Gloss is evil. It is the, it's the very case that glass is evil. You know, it destroys light. And uh, the ED doped glass. ED elements, what makes up an ED elements are additives in the glass that change and beat the piss out of uh, the blue end of the spectrum so that it converges at the same point as the red end of the spectrum. What it does is it causes electromagnetic phase retardation between the blue and red end of the spectrum so they'll try to come together at the closest possible point. There, these, let, these are secret formulas too, by the way. They're not published by Nikon or Canon. They're secret, secret, secret recipes of making ED glass. Secret. Top secret. They even file patents over them. I ain't going to tell you what's in there. Some people know four or five of the elements that are in there, and I know what four or five of the elements, but they put them in in different quantities, different densities. It, it's uh, some of the hugest secrets out there. You talk about uh, baking secrets, like a secret recipe. Well, the secret recipe of ED glass is held very secretly by Nikon, Canon. They've all got their own little freaking recipe, and they're all secret. But all these secret recipes have one thing in common, is that they beat the piss out of the light that comes through there. And while it produces sharp images once it reaches the sensor, it takes this to the foreground and background. <clears throat> it just, just destro destroys it. Gives you great corner to corner sharpness, removes chromatic aberration, the image is sharp, but the rendering, the color saturation and the rendering are off. Okay? The same thing gives depth to a hologram. It's the same thing that gives depth to a good old-fashioned five element, six element, seven element prime lens. That doesn't exist in a super zoom. Um, now I could go on with like a dozen more videos on this topic, but I bore the piss out of you. Most people aren't interested. Because there's no explanation out there from anybody who's like, Why is a prime lens better than a zoom? Because the answer is always this, which is so laughable. Because a prime is a prime lens and it's better. Well, that's not an explanation. I want explanations. I can explain. I mean, I can get descriptions out of children. I can't stand descriptions. I love explanations. Descriptions are for children. Thanks for watching. Bye.